Hi there guys, welcome back to the Dr. C channel. Thank you very much for tuning in for another part in our quest to build the perfect FV quadcopter. And what you are looking at right now is a DVR capture. So the middle part of the screen is actually recorded with my FV goggle. And this is from my current favorite FV camera, the Runcam Razer version 2. So the outgoing model basically uh, again, this is my favorite FV camera, not particularly because it, it looks super duper, it actually doesn't. But I can always count on this camera to show me where I'm going. It always shows me the right amount of detail. Whereas other cameras might uh, blow out the sky or uh, have the, a tree line be completely black. This camera has a great dynamic range, which is what you want if you want to see where you're going. If you look at this image, you can, uh, even when I'm flying dead ahead into the sun, I can see where I'm going, which is what I want. So, there we have it, the Runcam Razer version 3, the new version of my favorite FV camera. And the resolution has actually gone up in this new version. So I'm pretty sure I'll be well happy with this new camera. Not only because it shows me what I want to see in, in shade and in direct sunlight, but also because it's a fast FEV camera. It's a racing camera, right? So the lag between what the camera sees and what I get to see in my goggle is very short. So the delay is as minimal as possible. So my favorite camera, however, I'm not shooting this video for my personal fun. This is supposed to inform you, right? Now, actually the, the hooking up the camera to the quadcopter isn't all that uh, complicated. So I chose to, well, uh, try to uh, tell you what a good camera for you could be. Now, to be honest, FV cameras are a personal thing. However, I'm going to show you actually two cameras. And with either of these two, you'd be happy. I'm pretty sure I can uh, make that statement. These aren't the cheapest of FV cameras, but remember, we are building the perfect FV quadcopter. So this here, the Racer version 3, and this over here is basically maybe more of a beginner friendly FV camera. This is the Runcam Swift version 3, Micro Swift obviously. When I started FV flying I used the Swift cameras for years. Especially on uh, airplanes, on FV airplanes and I actually still use Swift cameras on my airplanes. So the major difference between these two cameras here is that the Razer is really aimed at showing you everything you need to see, even in the most difficult circumstances, whereas a Micro Swift will make your FV view look more pleasing, possibly. More cinematic. Uh, actually, let me show you a recording with a, a Micro Swift. And as you can tell, this is on a sunny day, so that's reasonably easy for any camera. But as you can tell, the colors are nice and vivid. Obviously, the resolution isn't super duper high because we are looking at an uh, analog FEV feed. However, I, th I think it's fair to say that this looks pleasing to the eye. However, this is not uh, a racing camera. You can't see every detail in every circumstance. There will be shaded areas which will uh, be harder to see in. So a, a camera like a Micro Swift is more suited for people that uh, maybe are starting out in FEV. Maybe you aren't flying near objects yet. You are probably gonna be flying a little higher up. So while you're flying higher up, you don't need to see all details in shaded areas. For instance, again, a Microsoft will make the, the image look more pleasing in general, more cinematic, if you will. Whereas a racing camera, not only will it uh, well uh, be aimed at showing you all detail, but also the lag will be significantly lower than in a Micro Swift. So even though I'm personally gonna be using the Razer 3, 
I did want to show you this as an option. Also, um, I think that goes for both of these cameras and a lot of other cameras. I went for the, the narrowest field of view for these cameras and that's still a pretty wide field of view. But for the Razer 3 you've got a 2.1mm lens and a 1.8. And especially if you are starting out I'd suggest going with the narrower field of view and that would be the 2.1mm lens. And if you are an experienced FUB pilot, you already know what kind of field of view you prefer. And one last thing, yes, I am only showing you run cam cameras, obviously there are other brands of cameras. I personally always gravitate to run cam cameras. I'm not sponsored by them, but yeah, most of my personal FUV cameras are run cam cameras. So I know these two to be good options, that's why I show you these. Alrighty, most cameras will come with a bunch of stuff. Yeah, in most cases you'll get some screws to mount your camera. You will always get a wiring loom to hook up your camera to the flight controller. In my case I get an uh, adapter. Yeah, an adapter. What is that for? This will change the size of this camera from a micro camera to a full size camera. And in my case I actually need this adapter because my frame is designed for full-size cameras like this one. This is a full-size camera as you can tell far bigger so I'll be using this adapter to change the size of this camera from a micro size to a full size. And I also get this uh, button interface thing. This camera does not come with a, uh, a joystick adapter thing to change its settings. See, Runcam expects you to hook this camera up to your flight controller and also to a UART to use camera controls. I never use, <laughs> sorry, I never use camera controls. Maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. Personally, I always use a separate uh, joystick or I leave the camera at its default settings. Yeah, I never want to give up a UART for camera controls. But again, maybe I'll do a video on that in the future. So basically the only three strands I need to hook up will be at the, the left of the connector over here and that'll be video out obviously uh, power and ground and that's all I need and uh, yeah the camera has a lot more pins more connectors over here and those will be for for instance the camera controls but I won't be using those so it is then time to solder up that wire to the flight controller which, uh, especially in my case, is pretty simple. Only three strands and I'm going to be using a scrap piece of wire. Obviously, I could have used the wire that came with the camera, but, well, I have this scrap piece of wire. And, uh, yeah, you then need to see how long you want that cable to be, right? You do want a little bit of slack to uh, be able to uh, move the camera around, maybe but definitely not more than say a centimeter or so. Okay, so I'm gonna strip the wire ends so I can pre-tin them. And let me see, stripping the wire ends maybe two millimeters or so you don't need a whole lot there won't be a whole lot of stress on these wires so again approximately two millimeters on all three strands In the video in which we prepared our flight controller, we already pre-tinned the pads, the solder pads, to hook up the camera. So that's already done. And at this point in time, I also have the diagram for my flight controller on screen. You can't see that, but I have a computer screen over there, which now displays my flight controller's diagram. So let's see. Pre-tin the wires. Uh, 
I've got my iron, my soldering iron set to 380 degrees Celsius, as you can hopefully see. And we're going to pretend these wires. At 380 degrees Celsius, that should move along very quickly, that pre-tinning of the wires. And there you have it. Okay, wires pre-tinned. I don't need any more solder. Okay, so again, I've got the diagram for my flight controller, which is over here. Can you see my flight controller? Yeah, over, over here at the front of our flight controller, over there, I've got three pads. And let me see, the, this one nearest this white connector is the camera, so the video out of my camera. Then we've got a ground, the middle pad, and then power, power to the people. <laughs> yeah, okay, hopefully you'll be able to see what I'm actually doing, since, uh, yeah, my hands might be a little in the way of things. This should move along very quickly. If you've done the pre-tinning uh, pre of your pads and wires well, soldering up these wires shouldn't take more than a maximum of two seconds. A maximum. One, two. Yeah, less than two seconds. If not, then you uh, might not have your soldering iron set to uh, the correct temperature, probably too low. Or the tip might be uh, worn or dirty. All right, last strand. Oh, wait a minute, I see a stray wire on it. One, two. And that's it. That's all. Always clean the tip of your soldering iron. Uh, give the wires a little bit of a tuck. Again, there won't be a whole lot of stress, but maybe a little. So make sure your soldering connections are good and solid. And that's basically everything uh, for this video. I'm obviously going to hook up this connector to the camera, put some screws in the in the sides, and that's yeah. Again, that's it for this uh, video. In the next video, we're going to be adding the video transmitter, the VTX, and that's actually uh, the last build video. Uh, yeah, so that'll be coming up very very soon. And uh, I hope uh, this was informative. If you are left with questions, hit me up a comment down below. Don't hesitate. Catch you on the next video. Bye-bye.